on sleep, one of the cool things about the human mind when it sleeps is dreaming. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think we understand about the contents of dreams? Like what do dreams mean? All the stuff we see when we dream, is there something that we understand about uh, the contents of dreams? Some of it is very concrete. So um, Matt Wilson, who MIT guy, um, showed in rodents and it's been shown in non-human primates and now it's been shown in humans that there is replay of spatial information during sleep. So initially what Matt showed was that as these little rodents navigate through a maze, there are these cells in the hippocampus called place cells that fire when the animal encounters a turn or a corridor. And that same exact same sequence is replayed during sleep. And it turns out this is true in uh, London taxi cab drivers. Before <laughs> phones and GPS were what they are today, the London taxi cab drivers were famous for knowing the routes through the city through these mental maps. And there have been, analysis of their place cell firing during sleep and during wakefulness. And so we are essentially taking spatial information about the location of things and replaying it during sleep. However, it's not replayed so that you remember it all. It's replayed so that if there's a reason to remember it, the links to the emotional system, to the components of the limbic system and hypothalamus that are relevant, like you got into a car crash at a particular location, or you lost a bunch of money because you were a cab driver, Uber driver, we'd say nowadays, and you were stuck at one particular avenue all day and frustrated, and you were getting yelled at by your spouse. That information gets encoded so that you never forget that at that particular time of day and that particular time of year, and this thing happened. So context starts getting linked to experience. So there's spatial information that's absolutely replayed during sleep. And we experience this sometimes as dreams. The dreams that happen early in the night when slow wave sleep or non-REM sleep dominates tends to be sleep of very kind of general themes and kind of um, location. It's a, it can feel a little bit eerie and kind of strange. Inc not so incidentally, the early phase of the night is when growth hormone is released. In the 80s and 90s, there was a drug that was very popular. It's very illegal now called GHB. Um, you could actually buy it at GNC or a store then. I never took it, but it was a popular party drug and some people, some famous celebrities died while on GHB. They were also on a bunch of other things. So it's not clear what killed them, but GHB was very big in certain communities because it promoted a massive release of growth hormone and gave people these very hypnotic states. So people go to clubs and they were in these very hypnotic states. It was part of a whole culture. Mm -hmm. That's early night. And those dreams tend to not have a lot of emotional content or load. That phase of dreaming is associated with the occasional jolting yourself out of sleep because it's a somewhat lighter sleep. The, the dreams that occur during REM, during rapid eye movement sleep and that dominate towards morning are very different. They tend to have very little epinephrine is available in the brain at that time. Epinephrine again, being this molecule of stress, fear, and excitement you are paralyzed during these REM dreams. You're, you cannot move. There's intense emotion at the level of what you're feeling and there's so-called theory of mind. Theory of mind is an idea that was put forward by Simon Baron Cohen, Sasha Baron Cohen's cousin. I think on the podcast, I mistakenly said that he was at uh, Oxford. It's like the cardinal sin. He's at Cambridge, forgive me. I'm not British, but. So the dreams in REM have a, are heavily emotionally laden. And it's very clear that those dreams and REM sleep, if you deprive yourself of them for too long, you become irritable and you start linking generally negative emotions to almost everything. REM, the dreams that occur in REM sleep are when we divorce emotion from our prior experiences. And it's when we extract general rules and themes. Uh, MIT seems to come up a lot today, but it's it's highly relevant. Susumu Tonagawa, Nobel Prize for immunoglobulin, but um, obviously fantastic neuroscientist as well, has shown that the replay of neurons in the hippocampus and elsewhere in the brain is kind of an approximation of the previous episode and a lot of fear unlearning of uncoupling emotion from hard or traumatic events that happened previously occurs in REM sleep. So you don't wanna deprive yourself of REM sleep for too long. And those dreams tend to be very intense. Now, epinephrine is low so that you can't suddenly act out your dreams. But what's interesting is sometimes people will wake up suddenly 
while in a REM dream and their heart will be beating really, really fast. That's a surge of epinephrine that occurs as you exit REM sleep. Wow. So you were having this intense emotional experience without the fear. You were essentially going through therapy in your sleep, self-induced therapy. It's like trauma therapy, where you try and divorce the emotion from the experience. And then you wake up. And some people also have the other component of REM, which is atonia, which is paralysis. Pot smokers, experience this a lot more than non-pot smokers. There's an invasion of, of paralysis into the waking state. I'm not a pot smoker, but I have experienced this. And when you wake up and you're paralyzed for a second, it's terrifying, but then you jolt yourself alert. So the REM sleep is important for kind of the self-induced therapy and forgetting the bad stuff. It's good for uncoupling the emotions from bad experiences and just there are two therapies, eye movement desensitization reprocessing, which is a eye movement thing that shuts down the amygdala during therapy, not during sleep, and ketamine, which is a dissociative analgesic. It's actually very similar to PCP. And ketamine is now being used as, as a trauma therapy when someone comes into um, the ER, for instance, and they were in a terrible car accident. I mean, these are horrible things to describe, but you know, they saw a relative impaled on the driving uh, steering column or something, and they will give this drug to try and shut off the emotion system so that, because they're not going to forget, let's be honest, you don't forget the bad stuff, but it is possible to uncouple the bad events from the emotional system. And there's all sorts of ethical issues about whether or not that's good or bad to do, but the PTSD is a failure to uncouple the emotion from these intense experiences. So, so the goal of this kind of therapy is in the uncoupling for that to be permanent, yeah. to, to, uh, to separate. Yeah. So they can recount the event and they can describe it without it triggering the same somatic experience of terror and dread, um, because terror, those feelings can be debilitating, obviously. And you're saying ph physiologically in uh, REM sleep, a similar process is happening. That's right. The, thematically, but REM sleep is about experiencing or replaying intense emotions without experience the somatic, the physical component of the emotion, either the acting out or the accelerated heart rate and uh, agitation. Likewise, with things like ketamine in, uh, therapies, that's the idea is you're uncoupling the physical sensation from the mental events.